Hello and welcome to episode 61 of This Week in Germany. We'll be bringing the world to Germany and Germany to the world with news for the week beginning the 2nd of March 2015. My name's Daniel. And I'm Rob. Each week we bring you stories from the news, society and culture in the English language. If you want to find out more, including ways to follow us on Twitter, Spreaker, SoundCloud and now Spotify, you can go to our website thisweekingermany.de. In this episode, a nurse who murdered two patients under his care and attempted to murder two more has been sentenced to life in prison. However, an investigation is underway to see if he was involved in the deaths of many more. A measles outbreak in Berlin so far has infected over 500 people. Should the government force parents to vaccinate their children? For the German of the Week section, we feature Yanis Varoufakis. He may be Greek, but he has been in the European spotlight for some time. And our destination this week is a museum in Stuttgart dedicated to one thing. And that thing is... The Pig. All that, plus the rest of the week's News in Brief, coming up. A nurse was convicted this week of murdering two patients under his care and attempting to murder two others. He was sentenced to life imprisonment by a court in the north of Germany. However, it turns out that he could be responsible for more than these crimes alone. Who is this man and what exactly did he do? Well, it's a he's a 38-year-old nurse um, whose name has been released to the press as Niels H. So in Germany, normally the last name is censored when it involves uh, criminals and reporting about them in the press. He worked at uh, Delmenhol, Del- Delmenhorst Hospital in northern Germany, and he essentially... Um, injected people with enough heart medication to create a medical emergency in which required uh, the patients to undergo resuscitation. And while he was working at this department, the death rate at this hospital almost doubled. So people were already suspicious that something was going seriously wrong there. He, um, before this most recent judgment that we're uh, reporting about this week, He had already been caught injecting heart medicine into a patient. He was caught red-handed by another nurse at the hospital. And for that, he was sentenced to seven years in prison in 2008. What happened in the court case this past week? Well, since that 2008 um, conviction, um, he has been uh, tried for the murders of other people. Now, while he may have murdered many people... Uh, prosecutors decided to focus on um, a a very small amount of people so that they could um, easily prove this case and um, bring this man to justice. So during – so in in this particular trial, he was tried for three killings. And during this trial, he um, admitted to a psychologist that he could have killed – um, a total of 30 patients while working at this hospital. And um, it, it could also be possible that he almost killed um, double that amount as well. And a special commission was set up to investigate around 200 suspicious deaths um, around about that time. And so we don't know how many he might actually have killed whether it is the 30 that he said that he did do. But certainly this time, this week, what happened this week was that he was convicted of the murder of two people. And for that, he was given a life sentence. That sounds pretty heinous. Did he say why he committed those crimes? Well, he told the court that he found his work unsatisfying. And he said that he felt euphoric after resuscitating a patient for days afterwards. So he would inject uh, a previously um, a stable patient with heart medication in order to put them into a medical emergency where he could therefore rescue them or seem to rescue them by resuscitating them and then essentially become a hero and to put more um, excitement into his uh, working day. But of course, um, that is uh, very, very dangerous and that's why some people died. Um, But a forensic psychiatrist 
um, who worked on the case, um, said that Niels H. was not mentally ill and therefore he is entirely responsible for his actions. Well, what's the what's the next step in all of this? Well, the investigation will continue. So um, eight uh, bodies are going to be exhumed this month to see whether they could have um, died because of his actions. And there's the possibility, um, though it might not come to this, but there is the the possibility that they could exhume up to a hundred people um, for the same reasons. Now, cases such as these are extremely rare, and if he is if he is responsible for as many deaths as he is admitted to, it would be unprecedented in Germany's post-war history. And also, if we look politically, the Parliament of Lower Saxony has convened a patient safety committee specifically. Um, to tackle people's concerns after this case. And they want to place patient representatives in every hospital to ensure that this doesn't happen again, or if it does, that it is quickly reported so that the damage can be controlled. But yes, the the case will continue as um, any more potential victims of his come to light. Now for this week's News in Brief. The president of the Central Council of Jews in Germany spoke on a radio show this past Thursday. In the interview, he said that it might not be a good idea for Jews to wear their religious headgear, a kippah, while in known Muslim neighborhoods that have had problems with violence in the past. This is not altogether a new way of thinking. Many Jews in Germany have been told that it would be safer if they did not wear this identifying religious piece of clothing outside a synagogue stating that it is a self-defense against potential violence. Germany is home to about 250,000 Jewish people. Many in the community feel their safety is threatened after the attacks recently in Paris and Copenhagen. This year, Germany has implemented for the first time ever a minimum wage. This new law states that the lowest an employee in Germany can be paid is €8.50 an hour. There was and still are debates going on about who this law should exactly apply to, and employees from a specific job or profession should be exempt. One such occurrence are amateur sports players. Germany has about 90,000 amateur sports clubs, and many of those players have signed contracts. On paper, these players are part-time employees of the sports club. As of 2015, the new minimum wage exemptions do not disqualify these players from receiving a minimum wage, and a controversy has arisen from these teams who cannot afford to pay their players a higher salary. The treasurer from the DFB, the Deutscher Fußballbund, Reinhard Grindel, said that while these rules apply for those similar to players that have these mini-job contracts, they did not apply to amateur sports players. As it stands now, amateur sports players will not be receiving the minimum wage, though many do receive a monthly allowance, roughly about 250 euros. This week in Germany's news correspondent, Ben Knight, reports from The Guardian on Lutz Bachmann, who had been the head of the Pegida anti-Islam movement until it was discovered that he had a photo on his Facebook page where he had posed with a Hitler mustache. After this and the media frenzy that followed, Bachmann resigned from his post and left the organization. Now, Pegida's members have confirmed that Lutz Bachmann has been re-elected again as a chairman for the group. He also addressed the unpopular photo that he's associated with. He said that the photo had been doctored, and the mustache of the infamous German leader was edited in after the photo was taken, and that he did not even have a mustache at that time the photo was taken. When asked why he didn't say this, when the story first broke, he replied that no one would have believed him anyways at the time. Those renting homes and apartments in Germany can rejoice as the government has settled a few heated issues that have been raised by the renters. On Wednesday this past week, a long discussion was had in Angela Merkel's offices and a decision was reached. A new bill was drafted, and in this bill it had laws that were in favor of those renting apartments. The first notable change was that when this bill goes into effect, 
new rental contracts in the areas that have high demand for housing will not be able to exceed the average local rent price by more than 10%. There are a few exceptions. As a promotion for building new homes where the demand is high, new homes will not be held to the same price cap. This also includes existing buildings where a major renovation had taken place. The other big victory is that renters will now no longer be forced to pay the estate agent fees when signing a rental contract. This payment is now being given to the actual party that commissioned the estate agents, usually the owners or landlords. Surprisingly, it was not the landlords who are now going to be paying the fees that were most concerned with this new law. The real estate branch is now scared that they will be losing revenue from those renting apartments that they will start privately listing to cut the agents out altogether. In the coastal city of Stralsund, which is in the north of Germany, right below the island of Rügen, two men have been arrested for violence against the deputy mayor of the city. The reason why this attack occurred? It is believed to be over rights to sell fish sandwiches and other seafood snacks to tourists that visit the city. This area of Germany is heavily trafficked with tourism pretty much year-round. Those operating fish stands have been known to make about 200,000 euros a year selling snacks to tourists. It became more than just business as usual when the man attacked Heinz Dieter Hartleit, the deputy mayor of Stralsund, with a baton. He has now been sentenced to 25 months in prison. An accomplice was also found guilty of planting a fake bomb at the Department of Planning and Building Control. Hartleit had attempted to increase the number of fish sellers by issuing more licenses. This was to promote competition for small sellers that were having trouble against the major long-time vendors. Other violence has also taken place in Stralsund around the same fish selling issues. This includes vandalism to boats and other personal property of those trying to sell fish snacks to tourists that visit the city. And that's the news in brief. If you like a quick and simple way to keep up with the latest from Germany, sign up for our weekly email newsletter, which you can find on our website, thisweekingermany.de. So now we're going to do something which we haven't done on This Week in Germany for a while. We're going to check in with each other and just see how we're getting on before we get into the main program. So uh, life here in Berlin is very good, though the skies are pretty grey at the moment. So I wouldn't advise that you come and visit Berlin right now if you're going to come all the way over from abroad. But certainly during the summertime, Berlin is a very, very nice place to visit. Um, We... I haven't done a destination Germany on uh, Berlin as a whole yet, but uh, but there is just way too much to cover, right? There is, but we have done a few smaller pieces of Berlin, like when we did the the Curryverse, the all about Curryverse in Berlin, or recently when we did Grunewald, which is a forest area in the state of Berlin. So while Berlin itself might be too much to cover in one episode or even multiple episodes, little pieces of Berlin will definitely be showing up in destination Germany. So, Rob, how are your German lessons coming oh, along? I am loving it. I, I feel like they're, I'm progressing quite well. I'm now finished with the A2 course and beginning B1, so I'm now a official intermediate student in German. Okay, so I'm going to uh, put your German skills to the test, if you don't uh, mind. Uh-oh. <laughs> so now you're an official intermediate student. Could you please demonstrate to us all, uh, using your high level of German, how to say Hello to all of the listeners in German. Okay. In German, hello is... Hello. Hallo. There's an A in there. Yes, there's an A in there. I, th- I thought you did very well, though. <laughs> but now let's go back to the news with our story number two. An outbreak of measles has hit the German capital, Berlin. So far, a total of 570 people have been infected. This week, an autopsy confirmed that the death of an 18-month-old child was due to a measles infection. 570 sounds like a a pretty big number. How is this compared to the the normal number of cases of measles each year? Well, it's more than all of the cases from across the entire country put together from last year, uh, which makes this the biggest outbreak in Germany since 2001. Any reason why this is happening? Well... It's specifically because um, parents are not vaccinating their children. Um, I think either because they don't think it's so important, because um, it takes an outbreak like this to make them realize how serious it is, 
uh, also because they might be skeptical of the side effects of the vaccination. Um, a few years ago, the MMR, the measles, mumps and rubella vaccine, um, was uh, falsely reported to uh, cause autism. But this has been since been rubbished by many, many studies covering uh, thousands and thousands of children that it is an, the MMR vaccine is absolutely safe and that people have nothing to worry about. Um, as for why it happened specifically in Berlin, beyond um, the lack of vaccinations or, or um, the vaccinations of enough people in Berlin, um, this particular wave was probably brought over to the city by immigrants from Bosnia and Serbia, um, which have experienced thousands of cases recently. Sounds like a, a pretty big deal. How are how are politicians going to handle it? Well, the justice minister of Germany, Heiko Maas, has said that he does not understand parents who refuse to vaccinate their children against measles, um, and his both his children are vaccinated. Speaking in the newspaper Der Tagesspiegel on Sunday, he said that it would be legal to force people to be vaccinated. However, this would only be used if all other methods uh, fail to control the spread of the disease. And also Berlin's health senator has said that he is in favor of requiring people to get vaccinations. We've dealt with measles for a while. It seems like they've been mostly not in the news recently. Uh, how serious are measles? Well, measles is a particularly... It's particularly serious for young children. They can potentially die from brain swelling, for example. And even if they survive, they can become brain damaged for life. Also, any person infected may not initially feel the symptoms, but they may already be potentially spreading the virus to others. Um, but it's quite easy to um, fix this, to protect yourself before in, in advance. Two doses of the measles vaccine are 97% effective in protecting a person from the virus. And are there any risks if you if you take this vaccine? Um, the only typical risks are developing a very mild form of measles after the infect after the, the vaccination. This side effect is definitely much, much more preferable to being unvaccinated and putting yourself at risk of, like I mentioned, potentially uh, death from a serious case. Um, there are also some very rare side effects which your doctor can tell you about. If you live in Germany, you can get all basic vaccines on any basic health insurance plan at no extra cost. So there really is no excuse not to get vaccinated. And coming up right now is Destination Germany. We're taking you on a journey somewhere in the country that is well worth a visit. Whether you're a tourist or a permanent resident, a foreigner or a German citizen. Here, we'll be covering the famous sites as well as those little known corners of Deutschland. All that matters is showing you that Germany is an interesting and exciting place to visit. If you enjoy the destinations that we talk about each week, check out our website, thisweekingermany.de. We'll have photos of each week's destination. So maybe you could remind us, what was the name of the place we visited last week? It was the Naumburg Cathedral. Ah, yes. Naumburg Cathedral in a kind of medium-sized city of Naumburg in Saxony-Anhalt. So much of this city looks like any other, but right in the middle, it has a real medieval feel and an enormous cathedral that's over a thousand years old. While the cathedral itself is definitely worth going to, what's really fascinating is that there's a museum with special exhibits that go through it. So, don't forget this little tidbit of knowledge. The evil queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the Disney film, was modelled after one of the statues you can find in this old church. So, are we going to a location this week that has something as beautiful as the statue Uta von Naumburg? Well, I would say that this week's destination is not really about beauty. But as they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So you have to make that decision for yourself. If you think pigs are beautiful. <laughs> well, I imagine some people do think pigs are beautiful. Apparently, they're very intelligent animals. But um, I guess if we're looking at pigs this week, then we're probably going to a farm. 
that say big no. This week's destination is in one of Germany's very notable cities, Stuttgart. And this is going to be a very unique museum right off the river Neckar. Neck, Neck, Neckar. Ach, Neckar. Right off the river Neckar, the Das Schwein Museum. A museum devoted for archiving and showcasing the art and culture of pigs. Well, now I really have heard it all. Art and culture of pigs. Well, I mean, I, I guess Germany is known for enjoying pork products. And I can remember when I first arrived in Germany, looking at the shelves in the supermarket and not finding very much lamb and not very much beef, but loads of pork. But, um, yeah, the pork is not bad either. So tell us what we can find in this Schweine Museum. It is said to be the largest pig museum in the entire world. Not that there are probably very many pig museums to compare it with, <laughs> though. <laughs> it does have over 50,000 different exhibits, all having to do with pigs from all over the planet. And it fashionably displays the art, culture, history of pigs, as well as pigs and man working together, showing that they've been together for over 9,000 years. Yes, man's other best friend, I suppose you could say. <laughs> So you say it has lots, though I guess it's maybe an understatement since it's dedicated to pigs. It has a lot of pe pig-related uh, material, but um, I still can't really grasp how this museum must look on the inside. So maybe you could uh, tell us more. <laughs> okay, let, let me try and paint a picture right here. This museum itself, ironically enough, is a 100-year-old administration building for a former slaughterhouse in the city. <laughs> Very appropriate. Wait, let that sink in a second. Uh, the museum has about uh, 800 square meters of, of space for 27 different pig-themed areas, and you can bask in all that pig glory. Visitors get to learn about the zoology of pigs, the history of pigs, big myths and legends about pigs, pig art from over 2,000 years ago until today, Pigs in advertising, pig toys, <laughs> pig ways, or the ways that pigs live their lives, and don't forget, pigs in today's dining. You'll see wonders such as Siamese twin pigs, pigs that are the size of a cow, different piggy banks filling entire rooms, and so, so, so much more pig stuff. I think we've kind of lost the, the meaning of the word pig throughout all of that. Um, it, it also sounds like it might be a little kitsch. Is this a serious museum? It is a serious museum. Seriously dedicated to all things fun and pigs. Okay, it is a little kitsch, but uh, I would say that doesn't mean that it can't be fun and exciting as well. The next time I'm in Stuttgart, I will definitely be checking out the Schwein Museum 100%. Also, I mentioned pigs and dining. The bottom floor of the museum is a restaurant, and it sells, you can probably guess, quite a large listing of different pork products. Definitely check out our website if you want to see some photos of just how interesting this place looks. Yes, with every single episode that we post on our website, you can go on there, thisweekingermany.de, and see a big gallery of all the different photos that we feature for every single feature that we have in the program, but also lots and lots from our destination Germany each and every week. So go and check that out. Next up, our German of the Week section, where we put the spotlight on a prominent person from this week's news, a German citizen, or even a foreigner who we deem an honorary German, who's had an effect, for better or worse, on German culture, society, or politics. Our German of the Week, Janis Varoufakis, as you might know, is not German, but is the new Greek finance minister appointed after the recent election of the new prime minister of Greece in the previous month. Greece has been in the fire, financially speaking, for quite some time. The new Greek government was elected to solve this problem, and the face of the solution is Yanis Varoufakis. He has traveled all around Europe to talk to the creditors of countries of Greece, trying to assure them that they should back Greece's new reform plans. Most of the creditors have not been optimistic about what Greece wants to try and accomplish, and how they want to go about it. Germany is one of Greece's biggest creditors. They have come out clearly to say that those ideas are bad and they are not going to be accepted. Not happy with the results, Fairfax has made some pretty lewd and off-putting comments about his counterparts in those countries, and the people of other European countries themselves. His latest outburst was while speaking on a Greek public radio show this past week. He said that Germany and Europe were using bloodletting techniques. 
meaning that they were using the same bad financial positions that caused Greece to get to its low state where it is today. He has managed to arrange a shaky four-month extension to Greece's payment obligations of over 11 billion euros, but he has stated that it will still be impossible to make a payment without additional concessions. And to finish off the German of the Week section, this week, comedian Jan Bermemann released a song all about Janis Varoufakis and his relationship with Germany. Listen to the song in full. Just search for V for Varoufakis. We are Germans. Our gross domestic product sums up to 3.7 trillion US dollars, which makes us the fourth largest economy in the world by far leading Europe. Our gold reserves are the second largest in the world. Please don't ask where it came from. We are Germans. We started two world wars and almost won them both. Almost. We don't fear death. Yes. But from up in the distance, there comes a man. Grace seeking vengeance against our peaceful land. Take it, color race on a black motorbike. He puts the head in the landing and wants to take yes. our blood. Yes. And that brings us to the end of episode number 61. We'd like to thank all of you for listening to our program, especially to our dedicated subscribers that come back each and every week. Yes, thank you very, very much for listening. And also, please get in touch with us. Send us an email to feedback at thisweekingermany.de. That's feedback at thisweekingermany.de. We'd love to find out more about our listeners. So how do you listen? How did you find out about the program? Do you share it with your friends? Or are you a German teacher who recommended it to your class? Or all these kinds of things. We are really interested in getting to know who you are. So send us your feedback, send us, tell us what you liked or what we could even do better. That's feedback at thisweekingermany.de. If you'd like to subscribe to us in iTunes or get a weekly email update, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Spreaker, SoundCloud, you can find all those details at thisweekingermany.de. We now also have a Spotify playlist of modern German music. You can find that link on our website as well. Yes, I remember um, a few weeks ago someone telling me that um, oh, all German music is David Hasselhoff and Kraftwerk. So, of course, there's a lot of very good modern German music. So if you want to listen to that, our specially curated playlist, you can find in the sidebar on our website. On our website, just click on Spotify on the, uh, thisweekingermany.de. This Week in Germany is produced by me, Daniel Winter. It is written and presented by myself and Rob Bishop. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next Monday with more of This Week in Germany. Thank you.